Diamond Public Relations with Robin Canfield presents What to Do in Cayman. If you're cool. There's only one place I stay on Grand Cayman, and that's at Cotton Tree. It's this beautiful little boutique property tucked away in its own lush garden on the west side of the island, north of the main city. Up on a hill. Each cottage has every creature comfort that you could ever desire, from your own living room to your own dining room, state-of-the-art kitchen, and for me it's the small things, like being able to make my own coffee in a French press every morning. And the beds are so comfortable, even though there's a lot to do on the island, you might not want to get out of bed in the morning. So the first thing we'll do when we get to Grand Cayman is kind of get that touristy stuff out of the way. There's this crazy place called Hell. You might have heard of it. Anyway, it's located on Grand Cayman. You can visit it and even say hello to the little devil. Take a picture. Isn't he cute? Don't look that mean to me. And send your best friend a letter from Hell. Next, we go out to sea. Grand Cayman has a one-of-a-kind spot called Stingray City. And although it's not a city, it does help you to get up close and personal with some crazy creatures. Some kind of this guy was a little shy. Most of them swim right up to you. With every single line. After all that snorkeling about, if you're like me, you'll be starving. So I recommend going over to Calypso Grill. They have everything you could imagine, from seafood to burgers to pate. This pate is actually made in-house, and it's some of the best I have ever put in my mouth. This beautiful concoction is called the Calypso and it's the restaurant's signature drink. Delicious mango with a little swirl of wine, which actually gives it this wonderful rich flavor. Even though the Calypso's delicious, my heart belongs to Bloody Mary. They serve them spicy here, but I still get the hot sauce on the side. <laughs> You probably won't have time for this on your first date, but on the second date, make sure you head out east along the ocean. Look at that color. Really, really fun drive. You get to see a lot of local stuff, lots of stuff that the tourists would never see. And then you end up at the blowholes, where you'll meet a friendly man who calls himself Obama. I'm actually not kidding about that. Your friendly guide, Obama, will lead you down to the so-called beach. This beach is actually a shelf of petrified coral that's formed over millions and millions of years. Obama will point out some interesting stuff to you where you can see the old imprints of the coral. Thousands of years old. And he'll show you how to experience the blowholes in style. Although he doesn't recommend you getting quite this close, willing to put himself at risk for your entertainment. One of the blowholes is actually called Tiger's Breath, and that's because it makes this roaring noise when the blowhole erupts. You can see it there off to the right a little bit where it kind of sprays up in a diagonal. It looks like something's breathing out of it, like a dragon. And it actually did kind of sound like a tiger. On your way back into town, sometimes you'll find a little marketplace. There you can find all sorts of fun stuff, you know, the jewelries, the bags, lots of local flavor. Between you and me though, I got in a little bit of trouble recording this thing. That woman over there yelled at me. Lecture. Then it's time to return to our little sanctuary by the sea. 
Cotton Tree really is the best place to get away from it all. No crowds, no noise, no hassle. You can do whatever you want. Come on, I'll show you around. There's a beautiful pool set right in the middle of the properties between all of the cottages. There's a hot tub, a little cabana. You can curl up with a great book, get a tan, take a nap, or take a swim. There's a hundred different places on the property where you can just sit and relax. I highly recommend getting one of Cotton Tree's signature massages. You'll lie there by the ocean, listen to the waves, and just let the stress melt away. There's a lot of great places to eat on Grand Cayman, but this is one of my favorites. Papagayo, an amazing Italian restaurant with some of the best seafood on the island, not to mention a wonderful wine list. Of course, at Cotton Tree, you also have the option of dining in your cottage with your own private chef. Executive chef Keith Griffin will prepare the most amazing meal you have ever had, and sommelier Harvey will be sure to pair it with some of the most delicious wine. That fish came off the boat just a couple of hours ago. And those vegetables you see over there, Keith picks them up at the market down the street every day. Nothing like hosting your own private, luxurious dinner party at your beachside retreat. It might be hard to believe, but I've saved the coolest thing on Cayman for last. Heather Lockington is the owner of Cotton Tree, and she's really the spirit of the place. She's Caymanian herself, and she loves sharing her culture with all of her guests. Not to mention, she throws a great party. Another of Cotton Tree's chefs prepare very authentic Caymanian food just for you. There's fish fry, johnny cakes, fish tea, plantains, fried breadfruit, escoviche, and pickled scotch bonnet peppers. Super spicy pickles. After even just one day, you'll feel right at home in Cotton Tree. A true Caymanian yourself. And trust me, you won't want to leave. But, now that I've told you exactly how to be super cool next time you're in Grand Cayman, you're all set. Just have to promise me one thing. When you stay at Cotton Tree, tell Heather that I sent you.